There's something deep inside us about caves. Entering my first wild cave 20 years ago forever changed the way I see the world, the natural world, and the world of man. Before history, humans have sought shelter underground. This instinct saved 38 Jewish men, women, and children from the Nazis in World War II in what became the longest underground survival story on record. Chris Nicola, New York caver, retired police detective, leads a group of young people on their first experience through Priest Grotto in western Ukraine. Grandchildren of Saul Wexler, the Sturmers, the Dodiks, other families from nearby villages, they pulled together in a desperate attempt to stay alive during the most dangerous days of 1942. Abandoning all hope for escaping the genocidal chaos above ground, the survivors turned to the dark unknown and somehow figured out how to live underground, a barely visible world of cold stone walls, irregular mud floors, not a moment of sunlight in 344 days. Saul's grandchildren journeyed far to get closer to the many stories heard in their youth. I banged my head on the ceiling roughly 800 times on my way there, and they were doing this in the dark, from memory, in leather shoes, or in his case, in no shoes, and maybe with a candle. It really gives me a new, a new respect for everything that he's had to live through. These brave souls first entered Priest Grotto. This epic survival story was transformed from one of man versus man to man versus nature. But their relationship to their cave discovery changed, adapting themselves in brilliant ways. This once foreboding environment became their best friend. Young men, curious what lay beyond the dark, became genuine cave explorers. Their find, Priest Grotto, with its 79 miles of labyrinthine passages, ranks today as the world's 15th longest cave. To sense their amazing story of survival and epic achievement as explorers, step inside their world, experience the dark unknown. As one of a handful of cavers worldwide to film professionally underground, there's one thing that has long frustrated me in conveying what being in a wild cave is all about. Prior to this project, there has been no way to convey the overwhelming sense of mystery, challenge, and fear mixed with curiosity that cave explorers confront as they contort their bodies to push through claustrophobic spaces, always wondering what's around the next corner. All story begins by establishing setting. Where are we? In the story of the survivors of Priest Grotto, the where is a main character, and it's essential to providing the audience a sense of the spatial relationships. From the entrance and beyond, how did they manage an entire community underground? Where did they sleep? Where did they cook? How was their water supply kept safe by placement of the latrine? As an early adopter of 3D, my foray into immersive media began with digital cinema. Exposure to LiDAR scanning and photoreal modeling instantly drew me to the realization that interactive virtual environments can change the way stories are told, especially stories with unique settings like the Priest Grotto. 
In 2013, we launched the Priest Grotto Project as a traveling museum exhibit designed to reimagine how visitors experience exhibits at science museums and venues of all types. Our single-user VR portals allow every visitor to experience Priest Grotto as no virtual environment has ever dreamed. Every shape and texture based on real data. The closest thing to being there. But a technical challenge still blocks our way. Solving it not only opens a new way to model real-world environments with photoreal textures, it points to applications beyond next-generation museum exhibits. It's an exciting time for the emerging VR market and for greater realism in video games. Photoreal environments promise huge potential in the VFX industry. Breakthroughs combine new ideas with the right people at the right time. Here's how Autodesk and I met. Working with cumbersome LiDAR scanners underground is challenging enough. But caves present one of the most challenging environments to scan because of the abundance of occlusions that return far too many data shadows. Capturing color, my early attempts using projection mapping also suffered from shadows. My caver buddy, Willie Hunt, director of electrical engineering at Surefire, prototyped a 40,000 lumen ring strobe that frees me to work handheld in delivering delit cross-polarized photography. The ability to capture pure color, as well as color plus specular, these texture maps spell a game change for physically based rendering. When Tatyana Zambazova and Ronald Polman saw what I was up to, photogrammetry applied not to an object, but to an extensive cave environment with delit photography supporting dynamic CG lighting. That these efforts were aimed at education and entertainment. We each realized this was the right idea, the right people, and the right timing to collaborate in forging the right tools. Valid solutions only make sense after you get to know the problems. Making anything work in the harsh environment of a gnarly cave like Priest Grotto pegs the needle. Autodesk liked the fact that I'd be pushing their software to the extreme. It's been a long road, and we're not quite there, but the experience leaves me more confident than ever we may have cracked the code. The problem unraveled when I focused on a simple question. By which mechanism would recap allow triangulation to ripple back in both directions between two projects? This got me wondering about RCP files, which I assumed recap surely used to store camera IDs and orientations. The problem now simplified around the nature of cameras. While many SFM solutions support setting a preference for unordered pairs, Recap 360 is smart to begin with ordered pairs, as photographers intuitively acquire their photography, overlapping one exposure to the next. That's child's play when modeling objects, big and small, as the object itself suggests moving in a straight line or around the object in a circle. I can glance at the resulting image grid and know where I am, likewise where the cameras are. And if the scale of the project required it, I could effortlessly make wise choices selecting which images should comprise the seam between adjoining meshes. Welcome to my world. Even with a known ordered pair, I have to study a while, sometimes quite a while, before I begin to hone in on common features. Problem is, I still have no idea where the hell I am. I can tell you the real thing isn't much different. It's the nature of caving. And then there's Priest Grotto. What's also very difficult to kind of wrap your mind around is the data management uh, and, the, and dealing with all these individual pictures. 
Grace Grotto is known what's called a, uh, a 2D boneyard maze. And trying to keep up with where these pictures go, what they relate to, the, the naming structure, what to shoot in what order, and how to correlate that against a map, a very confusing map. Uh, it's just mind-boggling, difficult trying to organize the work. While shooting, I'm thinking about the deep occlusions. I'm having to mentally project the camera's thrust them, balancing the need for the right amount of parallax, 60% overlap, distance to surfaces to remain within depth of field. And sure, I'm also thinking about the most efficient lines to take in returning tileable rows and sections. But boy, how quickly this cave plays tricks on me trying to manage that one. I take plenty of notes, but honestly, these are truly sad attempts at representing on a 2D piece of paper my stretched memory of work in some really tricky areas. The prospect of a seamless mesh beckons. All Things VR is at our doorstep. What better time with a solution supporting accurate photoreal environments? For video games, for a host of VR applications, and for creating worlds in VFX heavy films. And in the case of the Priest Grotto story, our work finds purpose, building empathy in this world. Walk a mile in Saul Wexler's young bare feet. Most will never venture underground, never mind in a destabilized country like Ukraine. But there's good cause rethinking museums of the future, enlivening our approach to education via immersive technologies that nurture curiosity and wisen us to the human condition.